Hey everybody, welcome to Doc Sports Happy Hour Show. I'm your master of ceremonies, Tony George, the show for guys and gals who like to bet on sports and all that encompasses. That encompasses, you know, having some action on things. Well, I'll tell you what, you want to talk about action? We're going to bring you some today. There was a little thing going on in Las Vegas here in July called the World Series of Poker at the Rio Hotel and Casino here. Big deal. Winner walked away with $10 million. Well, my guest today walked away with a little bit of scratch as well. He is the owner of not one, but two World Series of Poker bracelets. He has cashed in 193 events for $5.6 million. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my guest today, Barry Shulman. How you doing, buddy? Hi, nice Thanks to be for here. coming on the show. Thanks. First time I shook a guy's hand wearing a couple of those pretty bracelets you got on there, buddy. It's not very often I wear them. In fact, I don't think I've ever worn them both at the same well, time. Well, you know, we appreciate you doing that for us. And, and your wife, uh, Alan, has one as well. Yes. We're going to talk to her in the next segment, by the way, folks. But, uh, boy, uh, you had a busy July, buddy. Yes, it, we had a good summer. You had a uh, two caches in the World Series of Poker uh, tournament that was going on out here at the Rio. There's a second and a third this year, a little over 400 large in scratch. Yeah, uh, if I may correct you, we, I had two final tables. Two I, final I, tables. I had a few caches. There you go, but, second and third field finish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm curious to know, um, you come from Seattle, Washington. We're just going to wind the clock back okay. from, from past to present. Seattle, Washington boy, Pacific Northwest, uh, background in the securities business and the real estate business, mm -hmm. uh, retire in the late 90s. Correct. Come out of retirement in the late 90s because you saw some potential in the poker world. Tell me about that. Right. Uh, I uh, wanted to get out of Seattle into uh, what I called a warm weather port. Yeah. And I was going to play golf and play poker, but I still wanted to be relatively close to home. My mom was still alive and go and visit and all that. And it was either Las Vegas or Phoenix or California someplace. And I settled on Vegas and uh, I just couldn't get any better at golf. I yeah. tried and tried and tried, but there's only so good you can get without eye-hand coordination. So I spent more and more time playing poker and I was very, I loved playing poker. I was here, I was fortunate, but I wasn't working anymore. And so I had nothing for my brain to do other than focus on poker and I'm sitting and I'm playing with these guys and I said, well, geez, if, if they can make money at this, I can probably win. And, and so that's where I put my head, but I always enjoyed working mm -hmm. and I could see the poker was going to boom. It was, it was just crystal clear to me and uh, I wanted to get into poker some way and I didn't, you know, I couldn't go start a casino. I didn't have those kind of funds. So I went out and uh, I bought Card Player Magazine. It wasn't for sale, I just, I didn't even know these people. I looked them up and, uh, and it wasn't an internet. Then we didn't, this pre-internet in the very beginning. And uh, I said, gee, I'd like to buy you out. And it's for the first time in my life, I paid uh, an asking price because I had no choice. In real estate, we don't pay asking <laughs> prices. <laughs> we negotiate pretty hard, but we, we cut a pretty good deal. and. Um, then what happened, it, I mean, I'm there, I'm seeing it. The casinos are getting nicer, women are starting to play. The internet was starting to come on and that was really exciting to me. And online poker was brand new. And then with the advent of the whole camera, you know, where you could see the cards on TV, it was clear poker was gonna boom. Came out of retirement, bought it, and all the rest is history. And, Still there. And as, as your shirt says there, cardplayer.com. Correct. Uh, big property out there. Uh, I've I've been over there researching. Great website. Um, the it, so did you? Did that come with the magazine when you purchased it, or did you say I'm going to create this property from ground up, in terms of the internet? In the in the 90s, what internet? It had an internet site, and not unlike many many other businesses, in the 90s, what the internet site was was one page. That's an ad. It's cardplayer.com, it says, we're Card Player Magazine. That's what an internet site was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and through the years, of course, print media, any kind of print media has become less and less important because social media is more and more important, the internet's more important. So the card player brand is still there because of the magazine, 
We put out 26 magazines a year to the poker rooms for free. We hand them out every two weeks. We've done it for 30 years. And that's still the brand, but more and more people go to the website. Uh, we get, I, I don't know, 20,000 people a day, something like that. And, and we have about 2 million pages of information uh, about poker. It's all about poker. That's what we do. And speaking of that, um, we're going to get to the fact that you've authored three books, but I want to I want to rewind back to the late '90s. Okay. When you started entering in these tournaments, I mean, no one writes uh, three books on how to win at poker unless they've got some experience. So you started with your experience level at the tournament level. I guess is is when I want to talk about when you started get at the tournament level in your career. Well, we started out tournaments were brand new. Right. So most of the time was spent playing cash games when I was here. Mm -hmm. And I was spending many hours playing cash and it was fine. But I loved the concept of tournaments, always have, in that I like the competitive nature. And frankly, I had an, uh, enough cash that I wasn't a pro player. I didn't like to lose and I still can't stand losing. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to be able to have a big hit. If you're playing a cash game, the only way to have a big hit is playing a big game where you might lose a lot. And in a tournament, you could play a $50 tournament and win $500 or a $1,000 tournament and win $500,000. That appealed to me. And so I started playing more and more tournaments. But the first book had nothing to do with tournaments. It was really just how to play hold'em. Mm -hmm. and, and then I got more and more into the tournament part. And you're peak, and you're featured on Poker for Dummies on the DVD. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I've actually I actually own a copy of that. Oh. I, I, I might add. Um, uh, curious to know as well your first tournament poker cash. Yes. When and where? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you've had a hundred. You, you've cashed in a hundred ninety-three of them. You could look it up on card play. There you go. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. The, the one thing I guess uh, I mean it's probably three hundred dollars someplace. There you. Go. The one thing that I remember most that that I knew you from um, was the two thousand and nine European main event. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest names in poker, obviously. I guess it, it identify a lot of people identify. You know Doyle Brunson. You know Phil Hellmuth. Uh, Daniel Negreanu. Mm -hmm. Head to head final table. $1.3 million on the line. You got it done in last hand, a pair of tens. But talk to me a little bit about that experience, you know, because at that point in time, you know, World Series of Poker events on television, ESPN carries them, whatever, huge ratings, millions of people watching, plus those in the crowd. Um, you get all the way through that tournament. It was in London, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Get to the final table against you know um, one of the biggest names in the in the world when it comes to poker. Um, just curious to know about that experience. What, well, what what you took away from it? What it was like? It was a fabulous experience. And if you'll allow me to go back a little bit, sure, I, I would like to. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the November nine in the World Series mm -hmm. here. That's the final table of the main event in the United States. Okay, there's been about 100,000 people who have played in the main event since the turn of the century, and five of those people have been in that final table twice. One of those five is my son, Jeff. Mm -hmm. So, going back to 2009, he, was, he made the final table. And the way ESPN did it is you played in July, but they held it all summer and they had the final table in November, which is why they called it the November 9th. So on a whim, I said, why don't we fly to my wife, Alan, why don't we fly to London just to play in the World Series of Poker Europe Championship? Because wouldn't it be fun if I could make the final table and then both father and son the same year make a final table at the World Series? That's the reason I was in Europe. So, and the only reason, I just went for that tournament. So I go to that tournament and it's like five days of 12 hours and it is grueling and as you get older, it's tougher and tougher and tougher to play longer and longer tournaments for obvious reasons. It's, it's hard to maintain your focus. So I got very fortunate. I'm at the last tab final table. It's a much tougher field than in the United States but a much smaller field because it's almost all pros there and here you get amateurs from all over the world. 
but it's a very a very tough table. Every person there was like a celebrity type poker player. Time goes on. We start at noon on the last day. It doesn't get to heads up until five, until midnight. Excuse me. And these days they don't do that. They cut it off. They'll they'll have three days for the final table. Back then it was one day. So I didn't even start playing with Daniel till midnight. Heads up. And it lasted till 5.30 in the morning. That was grueling and I was old and I was tired and you could see on TV how tired I was and I was trying to take my time. And we went back and forth and back and forth and he's a pleasure to play with and neither of us tank a long time and waste time. And I mean, we think when we need to think but we don't artificially think. We got a lot of hands in and the lead, we started out three to two, he had a three to two lead over me when we started. and. Uh, Anyway, I got lucky. I won a couple hands, and uh, that was the end of it. After five and a half hours, years later, I saw him, and I said, "Geez, you know, that was really a great event. Thank you very much. You're really a gentleman to play with." Blah blah blah. And he said, "You know, my style is to play a lot of hands and wait for people to make mistakes, and you just didn't make any. And it happens. I was playing very well that day, so that made me feel good, and it also changed the way." I played subsequently to that. I'm a different player actually today. And that, even though that was only my second biggest cash, it was the most important event in my life. Subsequent to that, I had a bigger cash uh, about uh, six months later actually. So it's been a good run. You mentioned grueling. 2009, you would have been 63 years old? Correct. 73 years old? 2019 World Series of Poker here. Uh, you got a second and a third, two final tables here. Correct. Uh, Multi-day tournament. Right. I have I have played in the main event twice in my lifetime years ago. Grueling. You need some stamina. It's. It, I found it hard to maintain focus. Intimidation everywhere you look. You know. Uh, it, I'm just a bright-eyed bushy-tailed kid out of Nebraska at the time, didn't know what I was doing um, to a certain degree. Um, got the best of me this year, 10 years now removed from the European win. Um, I find it almost amazing at 73 years old, you know, that you, how you can have that stamina and focus for that long to be able to get to a final table and, and get a big cash like that. Well. Uh, it, it's very interesting. I, I've had to work on it on purpose very diligently. The first thing is I don't mess around when during the World Series on other things. Mm. Uh, I, I used to say that I don't drink during the World Series. I had a little wine this year I think maybe after some of the events. <laughs> but uh, fatigue is the big deal and I get tired so I didn't play any cash whatsoever and I didn't play any of the afternoon games. They tend to have events that start 11 or 12 and they tend to have events that start at like 3 or 4 and they go to 3 or 4 in the morning. I can't play in those late events so I don't even try. I mean I can play but I can't last. I, right. I can't last till 3 in the morning. And one of my secrets, although it's not really a secret, is even though I live 15 minutes away from the Rio, I have a room at the Rio that I take every year and I sleep during the dinner break. Other people go to dinner and this or that. I run up at the dinner break and I take a one hour nap. The power and nap. It's fabulous. And so that allows me to get going in the, you know, again after dinner because they always have dinner breaks at the World Series tournaments. Well, you know, you, you're few years my senior, not as, not as many as you think. I take a power nap every day. I Re love it. Refreshes me. Got, I've absolutely got to do it and uh, that's the secret to success maybe. Well, right there. One of the secrets. It certainly allows me to play my best game which sometimes is okay and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good but when I'm fatigued I never play my best game. We're talking with Barry Schulman, cardplayer.com. It's a family affair. We're going to talk about that. First, I want to thank uh, our uh, partner, and that would be Screen Content Management, dedicated to the development of visually compelling digital content, content development, delivery, and management for digital building directories, marketing signs, custom TV channels, and monument signs. Screen Content Management, 
digital signage done right. And Barry, um, interesting as I read through your bio and did a little study on you, how much of a family affair this is for you when it comes to the poker industry. Um, your wife, Alan, who we be sure and tune in for the next segment, no offense, she's a little easier on the eyes than you are, Barry, Probably. but nonetheless, we're gonna have your wife, Alan, on. She's the owner of a gold bracelet as well. Your son, Jeff, um, $3.5 million in caches and rarely plays. I believe you're all involved with the cardplayer.com website as well. Correct. Tell us a little bit about the fam. Are you the mentor of the family? Are you the, explain to me how this unfolds. I am the mentor. There you go. <laughs> uh, plain and simple. Jeff's been playing since he was a little boy. Before he could almost play other games, we played a little bit of poker. Alan and I have been together 15 years, and she played a little poker, but she didn't play tournaments. And it's very fun to be able to have a, a family, something or other, where you can sit and chat about a common hobby, and that's what we chat about. And, and so, and we're pretty self-critical, and we learn some things and we move along. And, and nowadays, uh, they teach me a lot of things, but in the very beginning, I, I did most of the teaching. And now there's a, I'm always getting teased uh, in the, casinos, who's the best player now, blah, 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 blah. But it's fine. It's kind of fun. Well, speaking of teaching, um, author of three how-to books. Right. Tell us about those. Well, my, my books are pretty simple and straightforward in that they all start out with 52 tips about no limit hold'em or tournament or, or this or that. And they're, they're how-to books. They're straight across tackle. They're, there's no anecdotes in them whatsoever. I have kind of a mathematical type of mind. I, I'm not great, <laughs> articulate person. Well, I actually drafted out my books on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, here's what I want to talk about. Here's when you get these cards and these cards and these cards, and then the flop comes and you do this, that, and the other thing. So I mapped out a whole outline, and, and then I did 52 tips on how to play the game. On started out just being Hold'em, and then it was Tournament Hold'em, and then I did a third one actually on how you play uh, online poker, how it's different. Yeah, and that's that was my next question. Online poker versus in-person poker. Mm -hmm. Live poker versus online poker. Um, is it night and day? No, but it's... Uh, not any more night and day that if you're a golfer and some courses are short and tight and some are long and wide, you, you adjust, mm. right? So right. There, there's certain adjustments to be, to be made in whichever one that you play. Right. And um, you also have a blog. Tell right. me about your blog a little bit. What, you mean Jet Set Travel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my wife and I are in Vegas about half the time, and we travel the world about half the time, and we're on cruise ships four to five months a year. And we love traveling the world, and uh, my blog's called Jet Set Way, and when I'm on the road, I write, I write a blog on Jet Set Way. People can go to it anytime they want. It doesn't cost anything, or they can subscribe. It still costs nothing. Uh, just to get it in the email, the blog, and to see what's going on, and uh, I also put it up on Facebook on, on my own site, hmm. uh, and it's fun, and it allows us to kind of remember where we went because uh, we tend to go back and you know who do you recommend for this guide or this site or this restaurant, and, and we get a lot of fun doing it. Alan is in charge of taking the pictures, and I'm in charge of doing the editing and the uh, writing the words. Awesome, and uh, also I guess speaking of Jet Set Ways, you guys are uh, after, uh, I think later this week or very soon on your way to Europe again. Correct. And you're going to end up landing about a month, you know, in what, what is that September, to playing in a big tournament in London. Yeah, it's funny how that works because we don't travel the world to go on purpose to play poker, but as it turns out, and we like to get out of Vegas this time of year. It's hot. Oh, yeah. uh, after the World yeah. Series. If you're here at the end of July and August, it's hot. So it's a good time to travel. And uh, we were going to be in Europe anyway. And they're going to have something called the British Poker Open that they just announced it's going to be in London. And as long as we're going to be in London, we're going to play there for a couple of days. Right. Barry Shulman, cardplayer.com. Um, one of the best poker players in the country, obviously. And we're darn glad to have you here. 
Uh, but you did mention something to me in the pre-interview for the show today that uh, you might, you author of three books on how to win playing poker. You also got a little tip for everybody, hopefully just for me, but we'll make it public. Okay. You got a little system when it comes to the sports betting. Yeah. Now That's you might not like I, that, it. That, 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 now, you're, right. now you're in my wheelhouse. Okay. So, but let me tell you something, brother. Uh, I'll take all the help I can get anytime I can get it. You got right. a little system that's working? Well, let me give you some background here also. Okay. I know nothing about sports. When pe And poker players, it's like the number one topic at the poker table is who do you like in the game? Blah, 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 blah. And I don't even know who's playing. I don't even know what sport they're playing. So we got to put this in perspective that I don't get a lot of my skills by doing hours and hours of handicapping and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. However... I'm fairly observant because to be good in poker, you have to have, you have to be observant. It's one of the things that's different than poker and chess, let's say, is you, you got to read the people, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Here's an absolute stone cold fact, statistically, you know, and there's variance just like in poker. You sit around the poker table and you listen to these guys talk about who they think's gonna win that weekend, and then you bet on the other side. It's very simple. Because you know what? <laughs> the house, between the wise guys in the house, that's where all the winning money is. Right. So what does that leave for these guys at the poker table? So that's my system. If you wanna bet, just go bet against them. So you're only, it's like the old gambling store. You sit around the, ta sitting around the poker tra table trying to figure out who the square is, and you can't figure it out. And pretty yeah. soon, you realize it's you. Right. You just sit around this all the squares, telling you what they like, and then you're going to go ahead and take the sharp side. Uh, we do a lot of that mon <laughs> monitoring in in, uh, in my neck of the woods, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to learn anything or get any news about the world of poker, CardPlayer.com, the owner, proprietor, right here. Again, what a fabulous career, and it's not over yet. The ride is still ongoing for you. Oh, not even close to done. And the family, the ride is still ongoing for them. Barry Shulman, cardplayer.com, all things poker, all things sports betting. Check out docsports.com. Some of the best sports handicappers on the planet, docsports.com. And we appreciate you tuning in to the Doc Sports Happy Hour Show and our next segment, Mrs. Barry Schulman, Alan Schulman, will be joining us talking about her experiences in the poker world and her career. Thanks for tuning in.